السلام عليكم ورحمة الله نحمد الله ونسلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا ولا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وديائها وعلى آل وصحبه دائما أبدا سلاته وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله We don't have a picture on our TV. Yeah, it's not coming through for some reason. Okay. Uh, we've got to work out the kinks. <clears throat> the first 10 days of Ramadan already gone. And so today is the 11th of Ramadan. Um, you know, of course, the first 10 days are the days of mercy. And then the second, these are the 10 days of forgiveness. And then the last 10 days of emancipation from the fire. Yeah. Now, people who've been coming here long enough know that when we talk, you know, it's not what most people talk about. Um, you know, because usually when we're talking about Ramadan, you know, most of the talks are, well, you know, you know, fast starts at dawn, ends at Maghrib, you know, no eating, no drinking, you know, these are the things that violate the fast, you know, and, and you shouldn't be, um, you know, doing anything that's haram at any other time, more so in this month, uh, because, you know, he, whether it's backbiting or anything else, because that also violates the fast, uh, you know, and, and one of the ways you know that you're violating the fast is that Allah subhanahu wa makes that fast harder upon you. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Allah subhanahu wa has made fasting an obligation during the daytime. He's made tarawih a sunnah at night, uh, you know, the nighttime prayers. Uh, and we should be asking Allah subhanahu wa for more and more during this month. You know, that an obligatory action in this month is worth 70 obligatory action in any other month and that you know an optional action in this month is the value of or more than an obligatory action in any other month and so many other things you know but I'm not going to talk about any of those things because by telling you that I'm not going to talk about them I already mentioned them anyway and these are things that are I guess, the, especially these days, easy to look up, easy to find out, and these are things that are commonly talked about. Uh, there was a scholar in uh, in Multan who, one time, he was making dua, and he said, "Oh Allah, you know, keep the uh, Wahhabis and the uh, the Obandis established." And his students, you know, there's. Uh, they said, what do, you, what, do you, what do you mean? I mean, how, how can you make this prayer? And he said, well, it's because of them that all of my talks, the, the, the root or the basis of all of my talks is about the azmat or the honor and the, and the greatness of Rasulullah. Oh, you know, otherwise, he says, otherwise I would also be talking about how to make wudu and make salat and do all of these things. Yeah, these things are important. But the pleasure that you get from talking about Rasulullah and the ones that he loves, you know, it's not, you don't get that pleasure in anything else. You know, for the lover, remembering the beloved, you know, that's the objective of his own life. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this month of Ramadan as a gift because of his love for Rasulullah. 
And it's interesting that he has decorated this month with the coming and going of many of those that are connected to Rasulullah. And of course, everybody, you know, we talk about Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. You know, and he's given this night. And why did he give this night? Because again, because of the question of the companions of Rasulullah. Sallallahu When Rasulullah told them about, you know, a man in Bani Israel for who for 80 years would be worshipping all night and fighting jihad all day. You know, and they were saddened because they said, oh, you know, we don't even live that long, most of us. How can we compete? So as a gift to satisfy the hearts of the Ummah of Rasulullah, so Sama Allah says here, I give you this one night whose worth is greater than a thousand months. And if you, you know, calculate a thousand months, it's 83 and one third year. But Allah Subhanahu Wa doesn't say that it's equal to a thousand months. He says it's greater than a thousand months. What does that mean, greater? One thousand and one months is greater than a thousand months. A million months is greater than a thousand months. An infinite number of months is greater than a thousand months. So he doesn't specify how much greater. He just says it's greater. Simply to satisfy the hearts of the of the lovers of Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, when we look at the verse talking about the miraj of Rasulullah sallallahu about the night journey of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi you know, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Subhana ladhi asra bi abdihi laylam min al masjid al haram il al masjid al aqsa ladhi barakna haulahu." That pure is the one who took his servant by night, took his slave by night on the night journey from Masjid al Haram to Masjid al Aqsa, whose precincts we have blessed. So, what are the blessings of the precincts of Masjid al Aqsa other than the graves of the prophets that are buried there? So, the same way here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decorated the month of Ramadan. Again, with the coming and the going, and the coming and the going of many of those that Rasulullah SAW loves. I mentioned last week, you know, on the third of, of Ramadan, was the passing of the mother of, or the leader of the women of Jannah, Bibi Fatima. As well as the mother of the believers, the wife of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bibi Umm Salma, radiallahu anha. But if you start looking throughout this month, you know, I mean, you have Battle of Badr on the 17th, you have the conquest of Makkah on the 20th of Ramadan, which also tells us that the Muslims were never idle in this month. It's not like, oh, it's the fasting month, we're going to you know, lay down and do nothing except, you know, not eat and drink. Battles were fought during this month for the honor of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Three of the daughters of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed in Ramadan. It was interesting, on the 17th you have not only the Battle of Badr, but you also have, you know, the passing of, on the same day, actually the same day as Badr, you have the passing of Bibi Ruqayya. The daughter of Rasulullah And you also have the passing later in later years of the mother of the believers, the wife of Rasulullah Sussam, Bibi Aisha Siddiqa. You have the martyrdom of Sayyidina Ali. You have the birth on the 15th of this month of Imam Hassan. And the one that I want to talk about today, you have the passing of the mother of the believers, the wife of Rasulullah Sussan, the mother of the leader of the women of Jannah, the grandmother of Hassanan, Imam Hassanan, Imam Hussain al-Islam, Bibi Khadijat al-Kubra, radiallahu anha.
you know, if you ask most people who was the most beloved wife of Rasulullah, so, so most people will, without thinking, say Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha. She was actually number two. Number one was actually Bibi Khadija al Kubra. You know, as we know, you know, she was a very wealthy woman in Makkah. You know, her father was a wealthy tradesman who had two daughters, and when he passed, so she inherited from him. She was married twice before Rasulullah, so some to wealthy um, uh, tradesmen, and she was widowed twice. Everyone in Mecca wanted to marry her because of her money. And at the age of 40, she is the one who proposed to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who at that time was 25. And after consulting with his uncle, Hazrat Abu Talib, he said yes. She is known as Tahira. Even before Islam, she was known in Makkah as Tahira, the, pu the pure one, because of her character and her conduct. There was no one in Makkah who did not benefit from her. There were many tradesmen or, or, or you know, merchants in Mecca who were established because of her. Her generosity and helping everyone. You know, she saw in Rasulullah some something that she knew was very different, was special. You know, when she said, when she asked Rasulullah to take uh, this trade caravan of hers. So she sent with him her slave Mesara and asked him to pay attention to him. Not because she was suspicious, oh, he might embezzle from me, but she wanted to see him. And so when he comes back, Mesara, she tells her, oh, you know, he's so honest. He tells everybody if there's anything wrong with the product before selling it and all of these things, all of his honesty and all of this other character. And she says, no, 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 I already know that. She says, I want to know something different. Then he says, well, as he's walking, all the shrubs and the trees bow down to him. He's always in the shade. His, his, his shadow does not hit the ground. And so he starts telling her all of these things. She says, that's what I wanted to know. And this is when she sends the proposal. And then again, Rasulullah of course, accepts. She is literally the richest person in Arabia. And to understand this and to put this in perspective, when Islam came, Abu Bakr Radion was the richest man among Quraysh. You know, at that time he has forty thousand dirham. Dirham are the gold, are the silver, large silver coins, and at that time three dirham bought a cow. So if you translate that to money these days, it's roughly maybe twelve million dollars. So he is the richest man amongst Quraysh. <coughs> After the, the marriage, you know, Rasulullah he's after he starts preaching, and there are many things you know, to talk about her, but to give this perspective. One day Rasulullah he comes to the house and he appears distressed. Abu Bakr Radiyah is a witness to this, and this is narration is through him. He was actually a, the neighbor. <coughs> so he'd come by. And 
So when he comes, when Rasulullah Sallam comes in and she asks, she says, you know, she says, what's wrong? Why are you upset? And he says that, you know, there were some poor people who needed something and I wanted to help them out, but I, I hesitated because I thought that the people will say that, oh, he spends like this because he's spending his wife's money. <coughs> you know, it's... You know, it's easy spending somebody else's money. Governments do it all the time. Yeah. Yes, it's just easy. You know, once you, when it's your own money, then you're always, oh, you know, how much do I have left? So she doesn't say anything to Rasulullah so soon. She goes to Zaid bin Harith and she says, go and call all of the chieftains of Makkah. You know, and this is before open, open preaching. You know, for the first three years of Islam, you have what we call secret preaching. Rasulullah SAW only uh, talked about this mission to those who are very close to him. And so you don't have this open opposition from Quraysh because there's nothing really open to oppose. It wasn't until the Rasulullah Sussam stands on Safa and calls Banu Hashim and Banu Muttalib and makes this open declaration and now starts preaching openly that you have the open opposition to Islam. And again, everybody is in, 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 indebted to her one way or the other. <coughs> so when they're all called, you know, Abu Lahab, Abu Jahal, all of them come. You know, oh, she's calling us, so let's go. And they come in and they're sitting in the room. And then she tells Zed, or then go and start bringing out the money. So he goes in the room and brings a box of dinar. Not dirham, dinar. Dinar is the small gold coin. One dinar was worth 15 dirham. And he goes this sheep placed in the middle of the room and he puts, he empties the box onto that. And he goes in and he gets another box and he empties it. And he empties it. And another one. And another one. Until Abu Bakr Radiallahu says that the person on one side could not see the person on the other side. And then whatever jewelry she's wearing, she takes all of this off and she places it in the pile. And then she makes an announcement to everybody. That everybody should understand that all of this wealth, I have no connection with any of this wealth. All of this wealth belongs to Rasulullah. To do with whatever he pleases. I mean, she could have said this secret to, really, to him, just you know, between husband and wife. But that wouldn't have resolved the issue of people talking. So she makes this declaration in front of all of Quraysh, so that now no one can open their mouth. And in Surah Wadduha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. You know, he mentions the actions of two people as his own actions. The action of Hazrat Abu Talib, radiallahu anhu, where he says, <coughs> Well, as Manta says, and you know that, and you were an orphan, and we gave you refuge. Well, so for your teacher, Rabbu Kupatadra, Alam Yajidka Yatiman, Fa'awa. You were orphaned, and we gave you refuge. Allah Manta says, we gave you refuge. Where did he give him refuge? The house of who? The house of Hazrat Abu Talib. So Allah SWT refers to the action of Abu Talib giving refuge to Rasulullah as his own action. And then he says later, he says, وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى Then we found you constrained of means yeah, and we made you rich. 
So whose wealth was used to make Rasulullah rich? The wealth of the Khadija Kubra, radiallahu anha. So again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions her action as his own action. During her, during her lifetime, you know, again, so she marries the Rasulullah when she's 40. She passes 25 years later at the age of 65. The Rasulullah could have easily married some other woman. And he was offered this. And he refused. And he would say that I will not break her heart. And even after her, you know, Bibi Aisha Siddiqa Radiolana, she says that I was never more envious of any of the wives of Rasulullah than Bibi Khadija. Even though she wasn't even married to him when, 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 you know, during that time. I mean, Khadija Radio passed away three years before Hijra, before the immigration. Rasulullah Sallallahu Bibi Aisha Siddiqa Radio started living with Rasulullah Sallallahu Second year of Hijri. So she's not even around during this time. And yet she says that I was no more, never more envious than any of the wives other than her. Because she says anytime anything ever came, you know, somebody sent, would send him like uh, some meat. He would always make sure that there was a portion of this given to the friends of Khadija. And she also says that when, when he would mention her, it was like a different light. Or if she was mentioned before him, it's just something changed about him. And she passed away because of starvation. In the three years, you know, for three years, from the seventh year of the mission to the tenth year of the mission, Banu Hashim and Banu Muttalib were boycotted by Quraysh. Official documentation written up by all of the other leaders of, of Quraysh, all the other clans, that we will have nothing to do with them. No trade, no marriage, nothing. Until they hand over Muhammad. You know, this was the issue. They would come to his uncle multiple times, hand him over. We'll, get, you know, we'll exchange another young man for him. We will do this, we will do that. Every time he said no. And one time he told him, he said that even a, a, a she camel is not willing to give up her child, how can I give up Rasulullah <laughs> But for those three years they stayed in this valley. They were confined to the valley. They survived off of chewing on leather and leaves. Occasionally somebody would sneak, be able to sneak something in, but that was rare. Every night, Hazrat Abu Talib would have Rasulullah go sleep somewhere else in a different place and have Ali Radha sleep in the bed of Rasulullah Because there, were, there was always a concern that they would attack during the night and try to assassinate him. You know, we have it easy. You know, even during our fast, you know, we know, okay, Maghrib comes and we're going we're gonna to indulge.
You know, for three years they endured this. Simply to honor, or rather to protect the honor of Rasulullah. You know, and, that, and we're not willing to, to even miss a meal over this. And so it was from this starvation that eventually, you know, even though they passed after the boycott had been lifted, shortly after the boycott was lifted, but the effects, three years, not being, you know, able to eat, and as you're getting older, you know, the requirements not being met. You know, you, the physical weakness you can see, but the organs inside also get weak. And so the year that she passes, is it Hazrat Abu Talib passed within days of her. According to some 14 days before, according to others 14 days later. But within days of each other, they both passed, and Rasulullah Sussum called, referred to the whole year as Amul Huzn, the year of sorrow. You know, his two greatest supporters and defenders, Al Usmanta calls them back the same year. But he decorates their coming and going with. Or rather, he decorates Ramadan with their coming and going. So, you know, when, when we're fasting these, month, these days, we can't forget them. You know, because Iman is the love of Allah and His Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the true lover loves the ones that his beloved loves. <coughs> so we can't forget them, you know, during this month. I mean, we shouldn't forget them any time, but especially during this month. Yes, may Allah subhanahu wa help us, you know, and here, I mean, there's so much we could talk about her. Uh, you know, I mean, this is basically kind of a, a, a snapshot. You know, so, you know, this, unfortunately, she's not one that's talked about much. But her connection with the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is very different than the connection of anybody else. And we should understand that. So again, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala fill our hearts with His true love. You know, the true love of Rasulullah, his family, his companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah.